if doing everything right, then we should uh, expect we have uh, such a response. Okay, so basically this one uh, tell us is that is the basically in concept is the summations of the system response. Okay, so that is a summation of the systems at response to impulse at time zero, uh, response to impulse at the one moment later, on, and response to the impulse at a certain moment later on. So we take uh, all the summations together that represent is the system response to the whole functions here. So basically this one representing is the system response. Okay, so that is the solutions. of m at double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to uh, f of t. And here, let me use capital F. Uh, here, I use the capital F. Okay. So, this is a very generic uh, integral. And again, what is g? g is our specific functions. And then you have to plug into this kind of format here, which uh, replace t by t minus tau there. Uh, this integral, um, there's a particular name and called the uh, convolutional integral. Convolutional int integral basically is to operate on two different functions. And the function, one expressed in tau, the other one expressed in t minus tau. On the other side, uh, mathematically, such an uh, integral can be equivalent in magnitude in the result equal to this, f t minus tau and g tau and d tau. Okay. And basically, that means you can swap the, um, the argument within the things and the result will be the same. Okay, and here let me look at uh, more um, review about this particular integral here. So here is the um, the visual illustrations how the convolutional integral can be done. And here, uh, here I demonstrate is the uh, using two different type of the functions. For example, if we have a function uh, as the uh, step input, okay, so this is called a step function. Step function basically is, uh, it has a value equal to constant uh, on half side of the time domain, which is t equal to zero. Okay, so here this is a step, and how can we uh, demonstrate how to come up with g t minus tau? Okay, if we are given gt, so for this demonstration is this, we are given any function gt, and then we're going to find it's going to plot uh, gt minus tau. Basically, that is a step demonstrated in this here. So the step is this, we are given a function gt like this, okay? So then the second step is we simply replace the independent variable uh, from t to tau, so basically replace that one, the shape keep the same. The next step, we determine the functions, which is um, have a minus tau there. Basically, from here to here, uh, you notice on the replacement, basically, up, this is the opposite sign from here. Uh, in graphically, you simply, uh, with back to the time, you simply reflect horizontally so basically, this is the horizontal reflection of this curve to here. And that corresponding is this one. And now the next step, we want to achieve t. Basically, that means in this axis, we're simply shifting by a constant that is t. So basically, you can see for this curve here, right now it's centered, no, it's kind of the feature at zero. Corresponding to this one, you simply shift it such that it's featured at t here. So those are the steps to build up, uh, to answer that question is here. And we can look at another shape of the functions. For example, here, uh, GT is kind of the triangle uh, pulse um, signal. Okay, so this is a given one. Then the second step, we replace T by tau. The shape the same. We simply replace the expressions of the coordinate systems. 
and then we want to go to um, get to the g of minus tau again we simply reflect this horizontally with respect to time zero get this one and the next step is we simply want to get the t minus tau so that means we shift this curve horizontally to feature at t here okay okay so basically from here to here that is a g minus tau here Okay, with these things in mind, then this page tell us how to uh, graphically handle this term. The next page, and which is I got from the internet, and that tell us how to graphically perform uh, this integral. Okay. <coughs> um, for example, if we would take um, this format, okay, so here this is a convolutional integral of two functions, x and h. Okay, if we take this format here, then already from the previous page, we know how to build up the xt minus tau, okay, like this one. Then the once we have this function be built up according to the step from the previous page, then we can draw it uh, on the corner system. Okay, and then from this time being, we simply change the value of tau of t from minus infinity in the individually go to the positive infinity. So that means in this step, if we want to choose t to change from minus infinity, basically you can imagine, have you played the, just like the Mario? <laughs> this is a function basically moving from this axis and then along with time kind of moving, traveling to there. Okay, good. Okay, so that is the movement of these functions. Then once you have this in mind, this is h. Okay, so for this moment, let me plot that here. For example, for this example, the h is given by a pulse function like this. You don't need to uh, take a note, you just listen to this kind of the interesting things. Okay, so right now for our functions, for example, if say, let me take x uh, is this one. Let me take this shape as x, okay. So that function basically is moving from here and then kind of be traveling to that direction when t is moving from minus infinity uh, to infinity, okay, so that representing is this uh, curve, this kind of path we are moving toward that way, along with time, okay? Okay, at this moment, you can see the two curve, the two graph doesn't overlap. So what means this one? That means you take the overlap area, okay, so say, let me draw another time moment, so when the moment got to here. So when we, um, along with the course of time, then that could be the moment. So this is the overlap area between the two, these functions. So the integral representing simply is to calculate the areas, the overlap area, okay? And that is the result. When time goes by, this this pulse will move along, then you can imagine the overlap area getting increased, okay? So, the taking the convolutional integral is to take the moment from minus infinity to infinity, basically in this graph, basically we have, is we take this, uh, this pulse moving along with time, and then we simply pay attention on the overlap area, okay? So graphically, here is the one I pick up from the Wikipedia, and two examples. The first example is this. We have this um, pulse, and this one is another pulse moving along. Another example is uh, we have a pulse, and then we have this kind of the, uh, so we have this kind of the, uh, the triangular-like pulse, and the other one is square pulse. And again, uh, one function is moving across the street, up, across the axis, and if you look at this carefully, and this is a movie. 
Okay, so right now for this example here, this line document is the uh, magnitude of the local overlap area. Okay, we can look at this one more time. And once they hit together, then you can see that has been. So this black line documenting is the result of that integral. And the result is the function of time. Okay, so this representing is a graphical, uh, this graphical representation. And again, this graph I pick up from Wikipedia. If you go to convolutional integral using the keyword, and go to Wikipedia, and you should be able to, to watch this movie and, again. Okay. So that is a concept for convolutional integral. However, this graphical concept doesn't help much about our solutions uh, in terms of vibration. But I try to reinforce the the concept here. And what we can try is to try one example. Okay. And this is a one. Um, so let me stick with uh, this equation, let me rewrite, and this one, basically the handouts today, uh, probably uh, we can have a 